Hello, hello, hello. Monday morning. Monday morning when all the possibilities are possible. They sure are. We are here, David Mustard and Jenny Mustard. And we are the Mustards. The, the Masters. The Masters who, podcast. Who are they? The Masters. Who are them? The Masters podcast. Uh, it's it's not Monday, but we can pretend. What is it? I don't know. Tuesday. It depends on what day we're... we're no, for us, oh, I mean. For us, for us. For Tuesday. Us it's Tuesday, yeah. How have you been? We have, we have already done one podcast episode this autumn. Yes. That was the most fun I've had this autumn. So I'm happy oh, to be back. Really? No, I loved it. It was <laughs> yes. like, I'm really happy that we're back. It just yes. feels wrong when we're not podding, you know? Yeah, I know. We just don't have time to do it all the time. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you all for pre-ordering Jenny's new book. Yes, okay and for all days. the lovely just notes and DMs and just being excited. Oh my God, I, I, I can, I'm, 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 I'm almost going to start crying if we talk about this too long. So let's because I let's move on because I don't want to start okay. like crying my mascara. If you haven't pre-ordered it yet, links are down below. Pre-order Jenny's book. Help it get to number one. On help, it, help it get to number four hundred or something. <laughs> no, but it's called Okay Days. Might yes. be good to to yes. know. And it's out in June, but you can already pre-order. And I will love you till the end of days if you do. I really would. Yes. Mm. Help yes. give it a boost. Yes. So that like all the bookshops out there see that, oh my God, this title is so hot. We need to order thousands of books. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, yes, we're back. And what have we been up to? Uh, apartment things uh, or flat things, I mm-hmm. mean, uh, and uh, trips to Sweden mm-hmm. and things like that. Uh, we have... We have bought a flat and moved into it moved into it and we even bought a car (gasps) that's true and you Uh, know what he did the wonderful boy next to me yeah he bought a car it was a thursday he comes home with the car and he's like okay come outside i'm on the street with the car come say hi to it and he was put one of those really big red bows around the car yeah <laughs> and like like it's a gift to me it's more a gift to you than this to me but still i pre- like you you technically gave me a car yeah. like a wrapped car with yeah. a bow exactly. it was it was an amazing it's, feeling it's uh it's beautiful oh i love the car it's so uh, beautiful it's it's uh it's I, black I love it. it's shiny it's large but yes. not too large yes exactly yeah uh, because we haven't had a car since early 2010 when we lived in sweden yeah back then we inherited that our first car yeah it was a beautiful that, car yes mm. beautiful car we had it for like three a years volvo. a volvo mm. we had it for like three years then we moved to london then we moved back to sweden and then we moved to berlin and now we're in london and uh, so it's been 12 years since we had a car last time david and do you think that this is the closest we'll ever get to having a child uh, we even have well, a name for it, and we talk about it. Like a dog. Yeah, that would, be closer. So that, would, that would be closer. That would be closer. But uh, yeah, this is the closest thing we've ever been so far to having a child. I think I uh, yeah maybe and like with the car, I obviously uh, use it to go and shoot houses, uh, of course. But uh, it's like we we haven't had the need for a car or, yeah. or like felt that. That that it's uh, anything that we that we need, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. But uh, now that we have it, even though you don't use it that much, it's like it's so you nice to, to know that, yeah. like, you know, you if if I need something from IKEA, I can you just can, drive like, there and pick it up. Oh, the even most though Swedish we boy alive. Even though we haven't gone to IKEA since we've had the car, I'm like just knowing. When do we ever that, go to IKEA? And, we don't I, even go to IKEA. No, no, I know, but. There is a possibility that we can do that, but also is that like is that like ha- a, a safety net for you? The proximity to an IKEA. Exactly, but it's like we've also uh, started uh, going on on the weekend. You know, uh, go for a drive. You know, an hour outside of London and go on like a walk on like a beautiful trail yeah. somewhere. It's such a nice thing to go to go hiking yeah. like outside of London I think in that's the it. autumn. Like, because what you usually say is like when you live in in the city, like in a big big city, mm. you don't need a car, and that's true. Like we don't need a car; we yeah. can t- get get everywhere so easily. Yeah, we've done it for twelve years. But yeah. the thing that you never think about is like, yeah, but the car is your escape out of the city. Yes, because living in such a big city, 
it can become, you know, like you, you need breaks from it. London mm. is amazing and we love London and everything, but you, you do need breaks from it. Mm. And if you don't have a car, it's a much like we would never like go on a like take a bus to a train station, take the train outside of London to do a two hour hike. Like, no, exactly, because, because you need the hassle to is too have much. a lot of stuff with yeah, you and stuff. Yeah, and just like can... the hassle of it. So like it gives you kind of an escape outside to nature. Exactly. And on our hikes then, we uh, not on the hike, but like be, uh, on the way to the hike, we have bought one of those coolers <laughs> that you plug into the car so it keeps the stuff cold throughout your your drive yeah. and throughout like and then we go on like a three hour hike and then we come back to the car grab our sandwiches or or lunches and just go and, and sit drinks somewhere drinks are ice cold yeah oh drinks are ice cold oh. and stuff ah oh, such a we're such ge- like Je- such Jenny geeks David. has also bought don't out me don't out me with a, this a trash can specifically <laughs> for the car that you hang behind the, uh, the driver's seat the driver's seat and you put like a bag in it and then you jenny can like you know so when i'm in the passenger there. seat and i need to throw some trash i just take whatever rubbish i have and and like re- reach behind david and plop it into like a, a soft sort of um rubbish bin which means that our car will never ever ever have any type of mess yeah you don't it's because otherwise it's like oh uh, you put some trash there you put some yeah. trash there yeah no trash oh, anywhere we, we it's have all we have bin. we have decked this car we have so many cables in there we have all the types of like all the napkins USBs, all the, and like wet <laughs> wipes cables. and the gum and the you know we have everything you need to yeah. be fresh and clean and nice because what have we done with this car david why why do why have we kitted it out so much we've got it uh basically two days before going on a road trip to sweden yes that's right we drove to sweden yes uh beginning of of august we drove to sweden instead of of flying uh so why did we do that uh basically to test it out kind yeah. of for, for the future because we're thinking like a dream in the future would be to have a little cottage in sweden uh where we can go to in the summer bring the dogs the dogs bring the dogs with us in the car and we just wanted to see like how long it takes yeah because if we do have a car uh, sorry if we do have dogs in the mm. future we will have to bring them to the summer house every oh, summer yeah, so course. we would need to drive yeah so this was basically seeing how annoying is it to drive and what did we find out we did find out that if we're gonna get a summer house in sweden it needs to be in the fucking south of sweden <laughs> Sweden, Sweden like is dri- driving from the south of Sweden to Stockholm, that's like half the trip yeah. from, from London to it Stockholm. It just continues forever. No, but it's like we, uh, so we drove to Sweden. It took three days to drive to Stockholm from London. Two nights. Uh, yeah, three days, two nights. Uh, on the way back, we did it in two days, actually. We Yeah, that was a bit crazy. Yeah. Not that we were speeding, it's just no, we no, drove no. for a longer period of time. David is the, the best day. driver. It, uh, no one will be surprised that David is the best driver in the world because <laughs> you follow all the rules. You're so careful. You drive so smoothly. There's, there's no like accelerating or jumping or like... Do, like you, you're yes, the... we didn't buy a BMW, so no, we, no. we drive very smooth and <laughs> nice. David is like the... Um, like seriously the nicest person to sit next to while he's driving i used you know it was you know what you might think it was boring to spend three days doing nothing but driving together but considering the months we've had like the year we've had before this and the months leading up to to that drive was basically we were working every day um like every weekend, and every night, we were doing renovations, like planning the renovation of this flat. We were, I was editing my book. David was shooting houses and taking care of our lives that all of the rest of it, David had to take care of. So it was, it's been so hectic and so much. So to just be able to sit in a car for three days with nothing to do, yeah. it was the biggest luxury. The yeah. boredom is by now one of the biggest luxuries yeah. for us. And you know what? With that trip... One thing is 
and it's really expensive to drive yeah, <laughs> that, that so way. Expensive. Of, of course, it's like you know, there you have to pay for gas, you have to pay for hotels, and like we 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 got, you know found great deals. So yeah. it's like no luxury hotels. Mm. It was it was just like uh, standard hotels, and so it's like gas, uh, hotel hotels, and then you have to get uh, from England to uh, the, the mainland U- Europe. And that is, I think we took the ferry there and it took, uh, and it cost like 129 pounds or something like that. Mm-hmm. And the way back, we took the tunnel, the Euro tunnel. Mm. That was pretty surreal that yeah. you, you drive your car onto a train. Yeah. It kind of looks like uh, Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer, uh, the if movie. You, if you've seen that film yeah, or TV true. show. It looks very like futuristic. Very futuristic. You drive onto that train and it takes you to, to the UK in like half an hour or something. And how much was uh, it? And that was that was almost like 200 pounds. Uh, Shorter really height of expensive. summer, maybe it's more expensive. And then, Oof. like, you know, there's no tolls between France, Belgium, Netherlands... Germany, Germany, Denmark, and then you get to Denmark, and then it and then it was like you know a bridge in Denmark that was, <laughs> it was like, it's like fifty pounds <laughs> to drive over a bridge. Are you kidding? You should yeah, drive over a bridge. It was, it was like fifty pounds to drive from uh, over the bridge from Denmark to Sweden. Yeah, uh, and back again later. Oof, yeah, it was. And really it was like you know these and things. And then another just, bridge, thirty-five pounds. It was just like. Denmark with the bridges. <laughs> yeah, like, the, the other bridge up. is also Swedish. Oh, it's it's the bridge. If you've seen the TV show, the bridge. Bruen. Uh, Bruen, the bridge uh, about you the, know this, the this, this Danish Swedish uh, TV we drove, show. We drove over that bridge twice. Yeah, such a beautiful bridge. Yes, I very, love that place. Very, very beautiful. Oh my God, Sweden was amazing yeah. i loved sweden oh, i, I, loved I sweden. oh we didn't want to leave did we we just yeah. wanted to stay I, and it was like okay you know whenever do you have like 30 25 to 30 de- degree heat for a whole week in sweden but we did never yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we've never experienced global it warming not good for everyone <laughs> <laughs> not, not, good for, not good for anyone <laughs> But better for Swedes than other people. Let's just yeah, let's exactly. just say I that. Like, like, that less <laughs> bad for Swedish people than other people. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, that's horrible. Sorry about you don't, that. Don't don't say uh, stuff no. like that. They, uh, people will make compilations of it yes, where you say global uh, warming is good. Uh, yes, I did not say that. No. I take it back. Yeah. Uh, but uh, now I'm going to say something else that's very controversial. Oh as no, well. don't. Uh, so driving this whole. Uh, the road stretch of road through Europe. Uh-huh. Um, you you basically you go through you know the Netherlands in like an hour, Belgium in two hours, and you know you just that's not drive. true. But no, no, you exaggerate more hours yeah. than that. But but <sighs> some countries mm-hmm. are longer than others. <laughs> are longer than others, definitely. <laughs> some countries look better from a highway than other countries. That is true. <laughs> That is so true. Some some countries have have spruced up their the the scenery on the side of the highway, and some no. countries just don't care. They that, just don't care. What, what do you mean? Some countries are tiny with huge populations, and mm-hmm. it's like it's and and they are t- top topographically flat I'm, and kind but, of boring to but, drive but, through. But. Uh, and then when you get to like northern Germany, you're like, ooh, now it's starting to look like you know the scenery is more beautiful. That's like, one thing, though, but that's just country- nature. Okay, I'm gonna say it. Mm-hmm. It's Belgium and and ne- the Netherlands. Doesn't look fun from the highway. The scenery is not that fun. It's very flat. It is flat countries, and there are uh, just like factories and and farmland on the sides. Yeah, and. It's not as visually stimulating. Not as visually stimulating That's as when true. you get into northern Germany. And Denmark is hit and miss, I must say. Yeah, that's it's, true. It's beautiful, but it's, it's, it's a bit, sometimes it's a bit beautiful, too sometimes yellow. Boring. It's, like, it's yeah. just yellow. Yeah. And then you get into Sweden and it's just like, it's, it's, it's green. There's hills, there's mountains, there's lakes, there's rivers. It's, there's farmland as well. And there's, it's, it's just... 
Sim it beauty down. as far as the eye No, but can I, see. okay, I'm going to agree with you that Sweden is the most beautiful ever, but only to Swedes. <laughs> I'm just going to agree. No, but it's just, it's nostalgia, David. I'm not it's nostalgia. Saying, I'm it's not where saying, we grew up. It's I'm, like where we spent our summers when we were kids. It's nostalgia. That's what it is. It's, it's shimmery uh, and pink. Of, you have your pink yes, goggles on. But also, I'm not saying that Belgium and the Netherlands are not beautiful countries. I'm saying the highway that we went <laughs> through those countries. It doesn't show them it from their best. Just, uh, yeah, it didn't show the country yeah, from their best side. Yeah. I have been in in Amsterdam, mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. I have seen movies set in Belgium. <laughs> yeah. and I've seen photos, beautiful. really beautiful. It's just just a, just a okay, stretch of highway. I have a, I have a suggestion yes. now. I'm gonna go. I'm, if the Belgium Belgian uh, tourist board is listening, yes, I have. I have. <laughs> What, I have, I have, I, yeah, yes, I have an please. easy, quick fix <laughs> yes. because obviously you can't just change the country topographically. You, I mean, it would be a hassle to plant a forest, you know, or dig a lake, or or I have like a much build easier, a mountain. Uh, yeah, I have a much easier idea. Yes. One thing. Do the highways straight through the most beautiful cities? No, <laughs> uh, like they do with Hamburg. Oh my God, driving through Hamburg is. Ah, oh, it's the most coolest, most beautiful. I love Southern Hamburg. Southern the, 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 the weird docks, the, the extreme futuristic, like the oh, yeah. it's, cranes it's, it's and stuff. Not like oh, the God, old town of Hamburg, but you, you mean like actually the industry, the, the, the industry part of, the of Hamburg that it just, oh the harbor it's, looks oh cool. God, it's I know so what futuristic. You mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like nothing I've ever yeah. seen. I love it. Okay, yeah. anyway. That's, that's too much of a hassle. I have a much quicker, easier fix for Bel uh, the Belgium Highway Tourist Board. Yeah. One thing that England has, and I think most of UK is probably the same, mm. service stations, services. Okay, yeah, okay, here, yeah, here we have something. Uh, the UK m might be better than most countries yes. at... Uh, any country, at, any country. Uh, yeah, probably any country at... Uh, service stations, yeah. uh, gas stations where you stop. It in the UK it just says services, and it says like five miles to services. Mm -hmm. And then when you drive off, Oof. it's not every time, of course, but sometimes these services are like a mall. It's like the most yep. convenient, clean place. You feel shiny. You don't feel disgusting yeah, going into the tons, public toilet. There. There's tons of beautiful Magazines, toilets there's there's coffee the shops, restaurants coffee shops it's, it, and there, everything is a shame it's just chains yes and there's so, also there's also always a small little casino <laughs> that's each, true. and they stops. have some something but, fun for the kids it's, it's just like a wonderful clean place it's yes, so clean exactly and what i'm thinking is this um even now, when we're just out on a little drive with our new car mm. even if we're just going for an hour drive we don't have to pee Still, David is like, Jenny, coming up, services, do you want to stop? And I'm like, for what? We're not going to eat. We're not going to Yeah, pee. we're home in just, 20 minutes. Yeah, just, just to like walk in there. And just, it's clean. It's cool. It's quiet. It's, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Belgium, you need to work on your service stations, frankly. Like, just do the UK model. It, it will do so much for the reputation of your highway. Trust me on this. <laughs> They're like Belgium taking notes. <laughs> the country of Belgium is taking notes. They should notes. send some delegates to UK <laughs> services to check it out and come up with ideas and do some scouting. Yes. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, um, I mean, not even Sweden can compare. Like we, we've oh yeah, yeah, this is Swedish uh, service. This, they're crap. Of, of compared, course, compared to crap. Of of course, in in the UK, there's eighty million people. Driving dr driving in mm. a small area, so it's like they can have you know a massive service station, and it's still you know it services that many people. Like yeah. if if you go to a smaller country, if you go to Sweden, there's 10 million people on the size that's three times the size of the UK or something yeah. like that. So it's like the gas station. It's just a gas station yeah. usually. But I mean, Sweden is end of the line, so except like they for, don't have any uh, through traffic uh, except for. Mm -hmm. put them or <laughs> whatever they're called oh yeah called, what's like. that called but you know in uh, uh, belgium is a through country so they will get traffic from other countries as well yes so services it, that, that's where it's at yeah i love it i love services yeah oh, that was um that was an experience going on a road trip like that also germany great 
<laughs> I know what you're going to say. Germany. <laughs> Germany. Great hotels on, Best on the way. Guest house. Uh, yeah. Guest house. Uh, guest house uh, in, in Germany. Uh, guest house. Yeah, exactly. Where you, where you like... They're amazing. With, with re a restaurant mm -hmm. and really nice rooms and everything. Really affordable as, yeah. as well. And, and Germany, fucking great job yeah. with the hotels and always like a a cozy outdoors area where you can have like a beer after you lo your long drive yeah in, in the evening it's really nice it's warm and nice yeah how like it just it's just like you feel do you know what you feel when you walk into a, a german guest house mm. you feel welcomed yes. everything screams welcome yes exactly convenient not if you're in berlin clean. but in no no other. but on the, if you go to one of those small places yeah. like on the oh. road it's just just Drive off from the highway into like a little mini town. Yeah. And they will have an amazing guest house. Yeah. Uh, it, it, was, it was really nice. Super beautiful. Oh my God. We loved uh, it so much. When we got to Sweden mm -hmm. on our way to Sweden, to mm -hmm. Stockholm. Uh, so our second night, we mm -hmm. stopped first in Germany and it was beautiful such a great a, a, a experience. So yeah. when we were booking hotels in Sweden, we basically, we, we drove so that we booked because we didn't know how how far we would get in a day basically because so we booked super time. late yeah so we, we booked just like two hours before uh, stopping so we were basically we stopped in in uh, copenhagen kind of and we looked on booking.com the app not sponsored uh, just to see like okay where can we get a hotel two hours away from where we are now and in sweden we were like we had a great experience in germany so Sweden will probably be great as well. No, I thought it was going to be worse because, again, it's not... Oh, it's more expensive, yeah. Yeah, no, it's just not just that. It's just, it's an, it's an, Sweden is an end station. Like, they don't have any through traffic. So there no. will be much fewer hotel guests, which means much fewer hotels, which means not as much to choose from and bloody expensive. I thought the quality would be like... I thought the quality would be would nice. Be yeah, fine. I did as well. So what happens when we get to, to oh Sweden, to the hotel? So it's... it's We get there at like 8 p.m. or something like yeah. that. It's we, raining and looks we, very ominous. We booked the hotel uh, on booking.com. It had... Well, we looked at like, of course, when we booked, we were like, okay, goodish reviews. And it wasn't anything, any other it, hotel around. So it was just no, that one. Yeah, exactly. There was no hotels around in like remotely in our budget, basically. Um, and we uh, we looked at the photos. We we're like, yeah, this looks fine for, yeah, we're just going to sleep there at night. And it was fine. But it was just... When we, when we got there... It's and they said like bar and restaurant. Yeah. And they had photos of a bar and restaurant on the site as yes. well. And when we get to this motel, it's right next to the highway, which is convenient. So we drive off and it's, it's dark outside and it has just started raining as well. And the hotel is completely pitch black. The hotel is actually the petrol station. Oh, yeah, yeah. The petrol station is connected to yeah. the hotel. So it's like you're... In, You're sleeping uh, uh, in a petrol, petrol station, station, more or less. And it's completely black. So we were like, this place isn't open. Yeah. Uh, and we we park, like, kind of awkwardly, because it was, yeah, it was a weird parking place. It, was, it wasn't like, no signs park here. No, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, it's like guests and, here and or something. And the door is closed. Like, the yeah, main entrance we, is we closed. We walk up to, to, to the building. It's pitch black in there. It's... It's like there's no one around. The door is locked, and then there's like a sign that just says, you know, like printed paper mm -hmm. that just says, uh, "Ring the doorbell to the right, and mm -hmm. we'll, we'll open for you." And we did that. And it's like no one's coming, and we did it again. Yeah, we waited forever. It's yeah. raining. Yeah, and after a while, there's there's a guy coming, super nice and everything, and he's like, "Oh, hey, welcome." Very eccentric. Uh, friendly man yeah exactly and he lets us in and it's like you know the uh, the act the hotel is probably built in the 80s or something like it's that it's huge though it's it's so really big, big. In, on the inside yeah and like and amazingly big and it's a ghost town in there because it's like it's, it's big us. and there's like there's a restaurants like... and bar which is closed because he's but like huge yeah be super huge because he says we just opened so they they had they had 
probably bought that place and reopened yeah. it and they didn't have a restaurant and bar so yet. So I'm like, okay, so so what about the bar and restaurant? Because like it's 8 p.m. We've been driving all day. We need to eat and drink. It's like, yeah. oh no, they're not open. We're like, we're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yes. Like it's not like we can just go to like a yeah. restaurant or something. So it's closed and, and it's absolutely no one there. And there must be like, a hundred rooms in that motel. Oh yeah, and, and it was so eerie because we were the only guests. Yeah, there, were, there was no one else there. Just us. It was just dark in there, and it was just like this we, one guy we showing us around. We might have been the around. first guests ever, but they well, had it, some they reviews. They had like twenty reviews or something. But maybe they gave their own, their, their own reviews. You know, yeah. like just tell I, their friends to. Well, give I, I looked at the reviews, and the reviews are like, their reviews were kind of like, we feel sorry for these owners. Oh, <laughs> kinda, because they, so they were empty. like. They were like, yeah, it was it was nice. But very empty. Yeah, they, they had some growing pains, oh, it right, said. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, yeah. But... I mean, we, we only slept there anyway, yeah, so it was fine. Yeah, we and we got left at 7 a.m. the day after. So, but so it was a little bit weird because fine, we've been it was, like... It was so weird, the yeah, whole thing. We, yeah, very, quite scary. Great vegan breakfast. Mm. Like, I, I had a spread of vegan breakfast yeah. there. So, great vegan breakfast. That's true. But also, it was just weird because we've been longing for Sweden for so yeah. long like oh we can't wait to be in sweden and two hours in and this is dark like, rain because it, if the german was guest house was like welcome we have thought of everything yeah. everything <laughs> is lovely and everyone is sweet and nice and everything is so convenient and then we come to sweden it's like not welcome <laughs> yeah. rain the door is closed no one is there no food nothing it's <laughs> yeah. just like what what are we going to do but yeah it was like luxury problems but yeah. anyway but, and but also the Swed funny. the swedish uh, hotel was almost twice as expensive as the German guest, guest house. Yes. Yeah, mm. it was. Yeah. Anyway, um, we spent a lot of time today talking about our road trip. One thing I want to say is that I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but I've started dabbling a bit in BookTok. Oh, Tic yeah. TikTok for book lovers. Yes. So I've been doing some TikTok videos about books and stuff. And uh, I think we should talk about the BookTok trends or the TikTok trends that we enjoy most. Okay. I just watch like dogs and cats on TikTok. But isn't there like a, a specific dog or cat trend that you like? Um, I don't know. I, 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 I think the trends are not, they're more forced. It's more fun when the cat or dog does something uh, um, funny on its own. I see. I yes. see what you mean. I agree. Um, but in honor of... I also the... watch some uh, film videos on there as well. Okay. So film, that, film videos. Videos about films. All right TikTok then. One about... one TikTok trend, or maybe it's not a TikTok trend, I don't know. But one one meme thing is mm. like tell me your uh, blah blah without telling me your blah blah. Mm. And since you just said you do watch mostly TikTok videos about films. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you, David, mm. why you're I'm gonna tell you you're a film nerd without telling you you're a film nerd. Okay. I'm gonna try if I can do it on you. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, let me see. Okay, first thing, you log all your films in Letterboxd. Yeah. Every single film you see, you log on there and give a rating. A rating, yeah. That, that's not yeah. super nerdy. Yeah. It's kind Follow of nerdy. Follow me on Letterboxd, David Mustard. Another thing that is typical of you uh, being a film nerd is like it's impossible, it's completely impossible to watch even a 30-minute episode of something without you pausing at least three times to look up the writer, to look up the director. Who is this author again? Who is this uh, actor again? Look them up. What else have they done? And then like, oh, I love this actor in this one. And this actor is also in this movie, who's also directed by this. I'm going to put it on my list of movies I want to watch. But now the question is, which watch list on Letterboxd am I going to put it in? Am I going to put it in luxury movies for Saturday evenings? Or am I going to put it in movies I want to show Jenny? Or am I going to, like, it's just, it's, it's, it's gone overboard, David. It's gone I, overboard. I have lists on Letterbox that are called like uh, New York movies. Uh, about rich people. About rich people. Oh, yeah. yeah. About rich people in New York, basically. <laughs> that, like that's, that's a whole genre of movies. There's like, too many genres. And, I, I'm and, telling you, David, rein it in. Be, Simplify. Because, like, if, if I... Sometimes I'm like, oh, I, I really want to watch a coming of age movie mm -hmm. and then i'm like yeah i made a coming of age uh list mm -hmm. basically or i really want to watch a movie set in this place at that time mm -hmm. and it's like oh i have a list for it okay but 
here's my I, I have theory. a list for you about like yeah. uh, lists of like uh movies about writers yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, like <laughs> but okay and, and also like research movies i should watch to write my next book and stuff like that oh and also i have a list of uh movies where a house plays a central <laughs> role kind of <laughs> no but it's like that either oh has God. a beautiful house or is about a house and stuff that we watched like before moving in i basically. love that i love that watch list that's one of my favorite watch lists. Yeah. it's called house owners <laughs> <laughs> that list <laughs> so uh i'm here to tell you now that your watch list uh, situation on letterbox yeah. is a symptom of a problem i also see on booktok oh tell me i've started watching book talkers yeah. uh quite a lot mm. and one thing i'm noticing is that book lovers uh, uh, maybe even the okay, if you look at if you look at your passion like a lump of you have a lump of passion for mm. books <laughs> a big yeah. chunk of that lump maybe even the biggest chunk mm. of that lump isn't reading do you know what it is no collecting the to be read pile yeah the pile of books to read. Yes, but well, it's the it's buying closely, of books or making related. lists of books yeah. that you want to read yeah. is more pleasurable for the human brain than actually reading. Mm. And reading is fucking pleasurable. Mm. I notice this myself. I don't have good reads. I don't buy a lot of books to be read. Um, but I do have my own Google Doc, my own Google um, spreadsheet. Of like all the books I want to read, all the books I have read, which books I've read this year and all like my favorite books and how I score everything and like all of the stuff. And just finishing a book is so pleasurable because I know that now I get to log it. And well, I mean, like yeah. uh, reading a book is not like watching a movie. It takes a long, it takes a long time to read a book. So it's like, it's, it's like a, a treat you get for finishing a book yeah. is to actually log it. Yeah. And when you hear about people talking about books, going into your list and adding them to your different like, oh, um, contemporary literary or thrillers or sci-fi. And just like adding books you want to read. The, the list of books you want to read will always just keep growing because you can never keep up. Oh, yeah, of course. It takes so, such a long time. I'm just going to check my So question is, does, does your letterbox account your list do they ever stress you out because you feel like too many movies too little time uh it doesn't stress me out but sometimes i'm just like well i'm never gonna go through this uh, on my actual watch list movies that i want to watch yeah. uh, like movies that i have just added to like watch sometime in the future it's 2386 movies and obviously i don't want to watch all of those but it 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 might be that you know you're just like oh that looks fun or that's that's a good one yeah. and stuff and also if i go into my watch list with 2300 movies and i'm like like yesterday i was like i really want to watch um uh, uh an 80s horror movie mm -hmm. because sometimes you just want an 80s horror movie <laughs> and i go to my watch list and i i set it to uh horror and i set it to 1980s and then i get everything that i have saved uh, in various lists so it cross oh this is the this is the main watch list then uh, right. i can put them in specific lists mm -hmm. uh, but but the, the main watch list is just like every movie i just click uh, watch list on mm -hmm, basically mm -hmm. so and then everything comes up and i could then just choose between i don't know 40 movies that I have that are 1980s horrors that I ha have uh, wanted to watch basically and I watched uh, David, Final Exam from 1981 uh, very like low budget not good slasher movie but I had a good time watching it <laughs> anyway like it's set on a college campus and it's like you know the worst dialogue you've ever heard and I wonder how these movies get made like there's so many movies with just like really strange dialogue and uh, I wonder how, how like who has okayed the dialogue uh, well, it goes through what, so many people it's a slasher movie for, from 1981 yeah, but how, it's, how much it's does it cost to just, to just 
pay a writer to spiff up the the dialogue. Well, they a bit. probably had a writer. Yeah, but <laughs> the wrong writer then, yeah. because like, how uh, how did this dialogue happen? It almost becomes like part of the enjoyment of watching those movies. Oh yeah. Anyway, definitely. I have another thing mm? that I'm how, how I'm gonna tell the people that you are film nerd without mm. telling. Okay, do you know what you? <laughs> David has invented a word even for this okay. phenomenon. Yeah. What David does is he doesn't, he, his film passion is so huge and so all consuming yeah. that David doesn't trust the internet with this stuff. Okay. David feels like if a movie is <sighs> like an old movie is like, um, uh, what's it called? Converted hmm. into digital format. You can then buy it or rent it online, right? The thing is, David doesn't trust that these digital forms will always be available. Yeah, because the they're not. Well, well we, so, we've noticed that so, so far. So David, yeah. what he's come up with a word, he's, he's future saving some, <laughs> well, well, some well, movies. Uh, well, future proof is, is a word okay, right? you're, you're that people future, okay. use for other things. Maybe not to buy their no, movie collection no but, but okay so in in swedish it's future safe it's like saving saving yeah, yeah so proving yeah, them yeah. okay future proving okay so it wasn't yeah. a new word at all <laughs> by buying old going to all these flea markets and buying old used dvds and blu-rays of all of our favorite movies yes so you are like, you're creating an analog uh library or well, not even an analog because DVDs aren't. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mix. hard copy. What is it called? Um, no, hard copy. Let's call it hard copy. Uh, no, but it's uh, physical media. Oh my god! Here we go. <laughs> uh, you, you're no, creating a physical it, I, media I, I, library. Yeah, let me explain. I think I think I've done. I, I've talked about this before. But uh, like, uh, if if you and me say want to watch uh, one of our favorite movies, mm -hmm. The Pelican Brief, mm -hmm. and and we. Uh, and we're we're googling Pelican Brief. Where can we watch it? And it's like, oh, it's on Amazon, Google, and wherever. And it's uh, three ninety nine to to rent. Yeah. And we're like, okay, let's rent it. And then the the, the year after, we're like, oh, uh, do you want to watch Pelican Brief again? And Pelican Brief, yeah. And then we Google, and it's like, oh, three ninety nine again. So then we have spent eight pounds on it. Mm -hmm. Uh. Then instead, I like usually I just look online for uh, 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 a used copy of the Blu-ray of Pelican mm -hmm, Brief, mm -hmm. and uh, it might be five pounds. Yeah. So it's cheaper to buy it than to rent it twice. Yeah. Uh, you can also buy the uh, digital copy, but uh, that, that doesn't might, mean anything no. because. They it, can just it, it rescind can still, the rights uh, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So it can disappear okay, but, even though but you bought it. But one thing you haven't thought about, one David. One more thing that I did this summer. Mm -hmm. can, can, can I say this story? Yeah. Because uh, we're always like, when we're here, we're like, oh, I want to watch that Swedish movie from when we were kids. And they are usually and never uh, digitized. It's, it's really hard to find them. And they are also, uh, like, even if we go to, like, the Swedish website where you rent movies, like the Swedish Amazon, basically, uh, and it's like, oh, this is not available. Yeah. Like, one of our favorite movies as a kid or something, like, oh, it's not available. So now when we went to Sweden, uh, we went to, you know... Uh, Secondhand shop, charity, out, shop. A charity shop out in the middle of nowhere, and just to look at some furniture and things, things like that. And they had like a bunch of DVDs, and usually I, I don't care. It's usually just the same things everywhere. But, but it was so many. They had like yeah, shelves and shelves and exactly. shelves. Exactly, and usually it's just like the same things that you know the the, the good old stuff. But I was like, question: oh, we... Did you or did you not go through every single shelf? You did. Oh yeah, of it course took, I did. It took what an hour and a half? No, maximum an hour. No, but, it was more than an hour. So I was just standing there tapping my foot. So basically, what I did was I looked through all the shelves, picked out every Swedish film, mm -hmm. every Swedish film they they had, because those are the hardest ones to uh, to come across online, basically. Mm -hmm. And I bought like twenty Swedish films on DVD, things that we've grown up with or things that we haven't seen. That's like. We can't find this movie. But David, one thing that you're not factoring in, babe. Yeah. 
what will you do with this? What did you call it? Future proofing. No media, physical, physical media. media library. <laughs> what will you do with all your fancy discs when they stop making DVD players? Oh, they won't. What, what do you mean? Can you just walk in and buy a beta yeah. player that works? Yeah, like, uh, f first of all, like, there's, there's companies that, you know, produces uh, VHS players mm -hmm. and they have, like, maybe someone has stopped producing, like the people that made VHS, mm -hmm. they, they might have stopped producing VHS players. I don't know. Maybe they have, maybe they haven't. But there's always uh, like some person that starts doing okay, them but, themselves. Okay, but the question then, because like Polaroid cameras, they stopped. They were out, they were gone. Yeah, and then they came back. Yes, then they came back. But what would you do in the meantime? Well, in the meantime... There's, there can be 25 years of no DVD player around. Yeah, I, I think there's less chance of that happening so than po Polaroids. Now, because Polaroids were small, DVDs were big. Question now is, will you then have to future-proof DVD players as well? Will you have a few in, in their boxes just in case? What happens well, then if you, they you, don't you, make the cables anymore? Well, what? yeah, who knows? But what you can do now is, you know, you, you can buy, I think, like a 30-pound DVD player that you can connect to your computer, for example. Mm -hmm. So buy 10 of those. <laughs> <laughs> what if when they stop doing computers, babe? Well, then you, you can cannot just stay in the past. You need to be. You need to stay on the train. You cannot live in the past. I like the nostalgia past. and yeah. things that yeah. happen in the in the past. You're like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm allowing this because this is your only uh, annoying Vice. collection. You don't have. You don't collect anything else. You don't buy any anything else. Like. No. I'm allowing it. No. Minimalist me is like not 100% on board. And the thing board, is, I haven't bought many DVDs and Blu-rays. No. Well, yes, you have. Throughout oh many years. Oh my God, you even bought a, like a, a lottery box of them. Twice you did. Just I, bought like a huge box just with random box. fucking that was not, DVDs. That was, that was, that, when are you going to watch Spider-Man 2 what are, what are again? You Why do you need three copies of The Dark Knight? You don't. Well, who needs it? Okay, I tried something once. I probably twice, talked about twice, No, I twice, only did it one twice. time. You want to say twice? I only did it one there's time. There's two boxes. So, no, there, there's only, well, the, did the other ones. Did you buy two are, boxes from No, the... no, no. There's there's one box. So, this this if you go on eBay, mm -hmm. uh, people are getting rid of their physical media. Mm -hmm. So, they are selling their whole collection of Blu-rays and DVDs and stuff uh, for uh, nothing basically and i just tried it once i i i on ebay i, I just clicked Failed it, experiment. it was like 60 pounds for a box of i don't know how many 80 movies oh God, or you're something like me that the creeps with this and it was it was only blue only blue race of like it was like the biggest movies you're not like, making it, it better, was, you're just making it, it, it worse. No, but it was like, you know, the whole, like, not my favorite movies, but no, kind of... You're thing, making it but, worse. No, but th <laughs> things that, you know, like, oh, when, I when might want to watch, watch that in the future. When are you going to watch, so, watch so, Hellboy? It, when are you going to watch it? You're never going to watch it again. Okay, You've so, seen it twice, no, you don't but need it's it. Like, you don't it, need was, it. It was the whole collection of all the alien movies uh -huh. on Blu-ray. That I already uh, gave you in a beautiful edition. You already had them. Yes, yes, so we didn't need that one. And then you know <laughs> all the all all the all the you know X Men movies, and it was kind of like you know all the just Marvel. It was I, just Marvel. No, yeah, it might have been some Marvel Twilight, in there. Twilight, but we already had Twilight. All the Twilight movies on Blu-ray. We only had them on DVD. So this guy, uh, you're making everything sound even worse this is an unreasonable behavior but you only did it once and you learned your lessons you're not going to do it again is that what you're saying that you didn't like this experiment um well i i i filled a lot of holes in our uh fiscal media library <laughs> <laughs> but you could just have bought them instead of getting all this crap that you what, don't what, want what, no but it would have been 
fucking 20 times as expensive to buy every single one of them. Can you at least now donate I got the every... stuff that you don't want to keep? Oh yeah, of course. But now we have everything in boxes yeah. so I can't look at uh, for the, the duplicates and give them to charity. But you will once you have your cinema room. Your cinema yes, library. of course. Then I don't need that. Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so I've told you... Who's with me, guys? No one, no one is with, with you. Everyone's going to be with me on this one. We don't even have, need to have a poll. It's just so obvious. And so, poll in the comments. as comparison, my, I'm, a, I'm a book geek. Mm. You're a film nerd. Mm. But my book geekery is so much more reasonable than your film nerdery. Why? I mean, you don't even have anything to complain about. I used to complain to you about the obnoxious stuff you do. I can't watch a movie without you checking everyone on IMDb. I, you fill our shelves with duplicates of movies that you don't even want to watch. You know? It's just what do boxes. I do? You spend money on it? I don't even spend money on mine. Yeah, you do. When? You, you buy books all the time. I get them sent. This is one no, of the... No, no, no. You buy... I, I see the receipts, so I know there's books being bought. <laughs> but I can, I can... I can... Okay. So most of the books that I... I, I buy books for my Kobo, my yeah. e-reader. Yeah. So they don't take up any space, right? And most of the books that I have in my physical library, mm. my physical media well, library... Well, I watch most movies just online. Yes, So true. they don't take up space. That's true. Most of the books that I actually have in my physical media library mm -hmm. i get sent to me this is one of the best perks you can ever have by being a soon-to-be uh, debut novelist yeah editors and pr people just tweet me like hey can i send you this book i think you're gonna love it of course you can <laughs> send away <laughs> And sometimes it even comes <laughs> it's, with a personal letter. Can, listen to this. Listen to this. Now it's book geek girl, like level 2000. I just broke the game. Listen to this. You get the book sent for free. Sometimes the advanced copy. It's not even out yet. You get the pre-copy to read. Sometimes the editor of the book, the person who has been working with the author to make this book shiny and sparkly, the person who's been like championing this book and, and who bought it, who, who, who is working for the publisher saying like, I want to buy this book. I want to edit this book. Working closely in blood, sweat and tears with the author. That person sometimes even adds a little personal note saying, Jenny, I think you're going to love this. I am the editor of this book. And it's like, I feel like they're rock stars and they are just sending me their love child that they've had with this author. Can I, can I just say I something? I mean, my mind is... Like, I'm pinching. Yeah, I'm pinching. Fa fantastic. So I have this... One of my best friends. She, I, I'm, I'm going to finish my the, this... Like, just to, to, to tie it all together of how beautiful this is. One of my best friends is an extreme book nerd. She reads everything. And, you know, I'm, she's been through uh, all of this influencer stuff with me. You know, I get sent expensive clothes and expensive jewelry and all that stuff. She is unfazed. She does not care about it. She is not interested in that at all. But then when she find, found out that publishers send me books for free, I mean a book, what is it? Like 15 pounds, maybe yeah. 20 pounds? Yeah. Sometimes less yes. even. <laughs> and she's so amazed. What do you mean? You just get them for free? I'm like, hey, I've been getting like so much stuff for free for years now. And this is when you like... Who was that? But anyway, uh, I'm from, you know, I think maybe this is a sign of my book geekery because I also find it so hella cool that I sometimes get to read books before anyone else. But it's it's like uh, when we get invited to um, like uh, press screenings of uh, like you know premiere of this film yeah, or this TV that show, is cool. and that I'm is like, cool. this is so amazing, yeah. even though we gone to a bunch of cool things i'm always like oh my god we're going to the premiere of dark crystal yes. the tv show that and so cool. we get to go to the after party yeah <laughs> with all the actors and everything that yeah i mean now david i feel like we're we're just going on on a tangent of how, how lovely life is but that's nice yeah that is nice when you feel like you're you're in the place you want to be yeah. that's how i feel with all this 
like you know i love i've i love my life even you know before i got a book deal and everything and getting a book deal was actually not only nice it was very very hard and and you know scary and yeah. anxiety inducing yeah. but now when i actually know i have a book deal it's just i feel like i i feel like I've never felt more at home in a situation. I feel like I'm just right. Like I'm just, it's, I'm just where I'm supposed to be. I mean, ask me after I've written three books, maybe, you know, the gazillions of hours it takes to make one has started to wear me down. But so far I just feel like I can go on forever. Yeah. I can just go on doing this forever till I die. I don't wanna, I don't wanna retire. I just wanna write more books. I only written one, so I should have like. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, write them, write them. Yeah, you're um, standing there with a whip. Like, yeah. Right, right. Uh, yeah, so if you're listening to this now uh, or watching it on YouTube. Wait, are you saying that w- look, when you would feel right is if I'm writing books, supporting the both of us in book sales, yeah. and you can just sit in your cinema room and watch movies and not work, just take the dogs for walks? Yes, please. So help us get there by pre-ordering <laughs> Jenny's book, OK sponsor, Days. Sponsor David's future <laughs> and lifestyle. time of leisure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, click the links below. Get Jenny's book. Pre-order yes, it. Please do. If you pre-order Jenny's book, it really helps a lot because it tells the bookstores that there's uh, interest in this book and therefore they will buy more and therefore we will sell more hopefully so it's ripples it's every, ripples every pre-order has yes. a ripple pre-order this book please okay days by jenny mustard it's her debut novel it's the best book i have ever read and it might just be the best book ever written Ooh. yeah it Ooh. is a possibility wow love story you, you of there, sam and luke Check it, it out. Do you find it sexy, David? How, like, if you could give it three adjectives? The book. Mm-hmm. Uh, be honest now. Even if it's bad adjectives, I want to know. So uh, be honest. Fun. Uh, uh, what is an adjective? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know. Fun, interesting, and, and super entertaining. All but right. it's like, yeah same thing can you, i don't know yeah it's super entertaining throughout it would work you find great it, as a tv show did you show. find it more sad or more happy uh oh happy did you find it more sweet or more sexy sweet really oh well the thing is i'm maybe I, you're I, right yeah yeah i don't know I, I was like I when, because when you say sexy a sexy book I'm like well it's not you know the gray thr- <laughs> trilogy no no no, <laughs> no, like, no. no no one is gonna whip anyone yeah. in this book but there is a lot of sex in it I mean not yeah, a I lot haven't not read a lot the latest edits yeah, not, not a lot <laughs> I haven't added much more no it's, it's not I think it's just a, a good amount of sex but it's not a sex novel yeah mm. uh, well Anyway, thank you all for listening this week. David, question. When you read me writing sex, is that cringe for you? Do you feel, no, do not you feel weird about it? No, like, it's not like your parent does it or something. Oh my God, don't even yeah, talk about that. No, exactly. No, no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you all for listening this week. We will be back sometime. Check out Jenny's videos and also go to my videos. So, Support me, subscribe to David Mustard. David and needs watch to be a man my... of leisure in the future. Exactly. Click his <laughs> so videos. Click my videos. Watch, watch Sponsor my house Sponsor him tours. buying more DVDs for his physical library in exactly. his home cinema. I don't ask for much. Use us for home <laughs> cinema with a physical library. Yes. Physical I, media library. And pre-order Jenny's books. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you all. Thank you for we watching. We will be back. Listening. Have a nice week. Yeah, have a nice week, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.